So the next thing I want to do is double check my margins because for MLA works cited, the margins need to be one inch all around. So to do that, I'm going to click on file, scroll down to page setup, and this is where it gives the information about how my page is set up. I'm in portrait mode with a paper size of standard letter eight and a half by 11. And these are my margins in inches, top, bottom, left, and right are all at one inch, which is how I want the document. So this all looks good. I'm gonna click okay. And now I can begin finalizing and cleaning up my work cited. And I'm gonna start with putting my citations in alphabetical order. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come back up here to the top, the first line, and I'm gonna hit enter because P is not going to be my first citation. I know I'm going to place other citations before this in alphabetical order. So I'm leaving this space for those citations to get added. So I'm gonna scroll down and look for a citation that starts with an A or B. So here is Akbari that will go first and to highlight the text with your mouse you simply click and drag over the text that's now highlighted to move it click on the left hand click button hold it down your cursor will, will turn that blue color and now you can move with your mouse where you want the text to go i'm going to place it on that first line and then i'm going to release that button and it will drop the text there. Now I have to keep in mind that any text that follows will be right before Panunzial or right after Akbari. So I can hit the enter button here to make sure I have that cushion of text. So I'll go down and find my next one, which is Bartel. And again, I will highlight, click, and drag. I can, of course, also drop a citation in front of Panuncial. So, for example, Carlson would be next since it is C. And I can click and drag in front of Panuncial. But you'll notice that it does not automatically push Panuncial's citation to the next line. So I do need to make sure to go in there and hit enter to make sure it's on its own line. And when I did that, it created this as a link again after I had removed it. And that's not a problem. Just again, click on the link and you'll see your options again to remove the link. So either way you want to do it, just make sure that there is a space for your next citation to fall into. And you may end up with some additional spacing when you move your citations around and that's fine too. You can always delete those extra spaces by hitting either the delete button or backspace depending on your keyboard. And now I'm gonna delete that last space at the end and everything is now in alphabetical order. The next thing I wanna do is include a hanging indent for each of my citations. So a hanging indent applies to the second line or any following lines of your citation. The first line of your citation will always remain left aligned and so it is helpful to have this ruler here so you can see this is where your first line should always be. But your second line needs to be indented. Same goes for any following lines, such as this citation that has three lines, actually a total of four. The first line remains the same, but the three lines that follow will be indented. So. This is very easy to do, although a lot of students aren't 100% sure on how to do it. Some students like to hit the space button um, and some students will hit the tab button, 
but by hitting tab, which I just did, you'll see that it actually indented the first line, not the second and the third as I wanted. So I'm going to undo that. A quick and easy way to add hanging indents is to first select all of your citations, go up to the top menu, options, select format, scroll down to align and indent, and then scroll down to indentation options. A pop-up will appear, head down to special indent, click on the drop-down menu, select hanging, 0.5 or half an inch should automatically appear for you. If it doesn't, just change this to 0.5 and click apply. Now all of my citations have a hanging indent. The last thing I wanna do is double check my citations. So keep in mind that when you copy and paste citations from a database or from our catalog or from any citation generator, the citations are only 90 to 95% accurate. You always need to double check your citations based on the source type and you wanna make corrections where necessary. The other thing you need to remember is when we first started, we wiped the formatting from this document. So I have to go back and add any italics that I removed from the original document. So I'm gonna do that here. All of my documents that need to be italicized, I'm going to italicize. Now for this first citation, this is a website. Uh, so the other thing I wanna point out is when you have URLs, HTTPS, and the slashes do not need to be included in your works cited page. They are unnecessary, so those should be removed. My second citation here is an ebook, and I happen to know with MLA that with an ebook, you don't need to have the URL, so I'm going to delete that. Instead, I need to have the text ebook added before my source information. I also notice here in my ebook, I have an additional space before my colon, so I wanna make sure to delete that and then add my italics. So these are the kinds of fixes that you need to do to your work cited page as you go through and finalize it. Don't just uh, copy paste and leave it as it is. As you see here with this book, uh, where the title of course needs to be italicized because it's a book, I received an extra slash in my citation as well as extra spacing, which does not need to be there. So I have to make sure to make those changes. And so I'm just going to go through <clears throat> and keep doing my edits, making sure it looks good as much as I can. And I'm doing this a little quickly, just as an example for you. So I may be missing some things. Um, when you do this, make sure you're taking your time to double check, uh, especially for periodicals, you know, number, volumes, page numbers, make sure that you're formatting those correctly. Make sure that you, um, are italicizing everything that needs to be italicized. And with this citation, interestingly, it includes both a URL and a DOI. Now for MLA, the DOI is actually preferred. The DOI is the document address. And so if you have the DOI, they would rather you put that instead of the URL, but you, if you don't have a DOI, then use the URL. This one happens to include both for you. You can leave it with both or you can remove the URL and just leave the DOI. Uh, as long as you have one or the other, you should be good. 
And then notice on the last citation, this article title is in all capitals. Nothing should ever be in all caps in your citation page. Even if the article was in all caps, nothing here should be, so I needed to fix that. And if you see that additional publication information is added when unnecessary, you can remove that as well.